At this point, we're pretty much done with our use auto save hook, but I did want to take this a step further and show you what it would look like to use the really cool library xState. So xState, if you go to their docs, it will tell you that it is a JavaScript and TypeScript finite state machines and state shards for the modern web. Um, what that means is, I mean, there's a lot to unpack there, and I'm, I'm really not going to go over all of that or even how all the API of it works. It's just, it's a really cool library that really helps you think well about your state management, helps you think about um, just the logic of your UIs as something be, you know, outside of just React or outside of any given framework, even outside of JavaScript, unless you think about it more as diagrams and as logic and as graphs and just all sorts of cool stuff. It's a really easy world to get. Um, just kind of, you know, absorbed in. So I would definitely check out the docs for that. Um, but enough, you know, preaching the gospel of XState. I, I wanted to show you XState because it's really what led me to thinking about enums and thinking about some of these things. Because basically what I'm doing is I'm sending events, which is how um, XState and state charts and all that stuff uh, would handle this sort of a thing. So I'm going to show you what that looks like by using XState. So the first thing to do is to go ahead and uh, spell import correctly and then import machine from xState. We should be good there. And then we'll import use machine from xState React. So they've got a React specific library um, that's going to let us make a, a nice little hook out of it. And so down here, we're going to go ahead and we'll do it above this delayed save. We'll create a auto save machine. And all it is, is you wrap um, an object, you, you put an object inside of this machine, this thing that we exported from, or sorry, imported from xState. And the object just acts as a configuration for what the machine should look like. So the first thing everything every machine needs is it needs an ID. So I usually just name it whatever I named the constant above it. Then it needs an initial state. Um, but we'll get back to that because we don't have any states yet. And then it actually needs some states. So this is pretty much the same idea as what we had up here with these enums. That's all these states are going to be. So what did I have here? It's saving, waiting to save, and saved. And it doesn't like those because each of these actually needs to be pointing to an object. And that object will represent, will let us you know, specify a lot of different things like what events can go to this state, et cetera, et cetera. So before we get too into the weeds of that, let's go ahead and actually use this. So we're going to say const, um, we're going to call it, the, the convention is do current and send. So think of this, it's very similar to uh, use reducer. If you ever use that, you usually have state and dispatch. Um, this is a little bit different, but basically current, yeah, that is the, the state of your machine at any given time. And send is the way that you can send events and update the machine and sorts of other stuff. So we'll say use machine. And then we'll say auto save machine. And then what we're going to want to return down here is a save state, which we're going to return current dot value. And that'll be the current state that we're in. So I'm actually going to comment this out and let's just comment everything out because we, we don't really want all this at the moment. Let's uh, save this and refresh this because it, it seems to be a little bit confused and hopefully we can resolve that. So initial state. So I might need to, again, delete this state. It probably got saved. Um, in kind of a weird fashion. And let's see, what else is it mad about? So initial state of that cannot be, okay, I must have named this the wrong thing. Initial, ah, so we need to actually give it that initial state, like I said. So we'll say it's saved. That's just how we had it before. We said initially, yep, you're saved. Perfect. So now at this point, what, what do we actually want to do? Well, when we're in the save state, we wanted to be able to say, hey, go to waiting to save. So the way you do that in X state or in state machines is you have um, an event that you can pass and that'll, that'll cause a transition. So the event that we're going to have is going to be called um, has unsaved data. So we're letting this thing know you've got some unsaved data and I, I, you know, I want you to start the process of uploading that. And from there, we'll go to waiting to save. So this just means when has unsaved data is called that event, it is going to go to the waiting to save state. Um, but you actually need to wrap this all inside of an on. So that lets you know, differentiate that these are events, not just, you know, uh, other things that could be kind of confusing or get mixed up. So now how do we implement that? Well, let's go back to our use effects. So if we're in here, we can't do this the way we had it. We need to do dot cur uh, that's actually not how you do it. 
dot matches. So we'll say if it matches saved, um, you could get the value and do equals equals equals, but this is kind of nice because it handles uh, if you had like nested states and stuff, um, it's a little bit easier. So we'll do current dot matches saved. If that's true, we're going to go ahead and send, um, but we're not actually sending waiting to save. We're not directly updating the state ourselves, sending events and letting our machine handle what it's supposed to do. So we're going to send has unsaved data. And let's go ahead and change this to current. And I think this needs to end in there. And we should be good. So let's just give this a refresh and see if it's at least doing that much. Perfect. So it's going to waiting to save, which is nice. Another really cool thing about using state machines is since we only define this has unsaved data inside of saved, that means that if we pass this event to any other state, it's not going to do anything with it. it. It doesn't even, it has no specification as to what it should do. So we can actually get rid of that, which is really nice because that means we can get rid of current. And so we just say, hey, if the data isn't equal, has unsaved data, just, just make that happen. And so it'll only actually send that event when, or rather that event sending will only matter if you're inside of the save state. But at this point, since we're waiting to save, it doesn't matter. So that's really nice. So now if we're in waiting to save, what do we want to do? Well, after, you know, a thousand milliseconds, we want to go into saving. And so the way to do that is to say after, and then we can say a thousand, oops, go into saving. And let's just see if that worked. That's perfect. But obviously this is a problem. We don't want to hard code this here. We want to get it from the values. So the way that you can do that is you can do delay and then you can have the context and an event. So this is how this is how callbacks in XState typically work. Um, whenever you have something that can take a callback, you first have the context, which we're not even going to talk about. But context, think of it as like what you usually think about a state in React. Um, it's all these data and values. And we could have put the context that we're or the state that we're using in MM in here. But remember, we're just trying to make a use auto save hook. We're not trying to ingrain it too deeply into our um, component because we want it to be reusable across the board. And then you can pass um, uh, e like uh, 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 this parameter, and it can it can have anything in it. Um, so with that e, we're going to take off the delay, and we're going to say if the delay is not there, we'll just pass in a thousand. So that'll be kind of like our um, you know automatic, or, or sorry, our default. And then after the the delay is done, you can send a you can have a target, and the target is just saying. Um, where are you going to go next? What, what state are you going to tra transition to? You could actually transition back to yourself, but then we'd get in an infinite loop, and that's kind of pointless. So now what we need to do is this is actually good, except we need to pass in our delay. So whenever you're doing an event, you can also pass in um, some data. Think of that as like when you dispatch, usually with a, with a reducer, usually what you'll do is you'll dispatch, um, ignore that. You'll have a type, right? That kind of signifies your event. And then you'll have a payload. That's a very typical thing. So think of this as the payload there. Uh, so this isn't happy because we need to pass in delay. Let's save that. Let's go ahead and refresh over here. And let's see if that works. So no reference for delay expression. Delay was found on machine autosave. So let's see. Something probably didn't go exactly right. Let's refresh this and make sure it wasn't that. So I'm going to actually grab it from um, what I had before and just make sure it maybe needs to be wrapped inside of an array like this. Mm, it is now not happy. So ready to save. Ah, we need to go to saving, right? So we're going to refresh that. And after a thousand milliseconds, it went from waiting to save to saving. That's perfect. So it needs to be wrapped in these um, arrays. That's one that X state that um, can be a little bit difficult. There's just there's a lot of syntax. It's almost its own little language. So I definitely am not an expert, um, and there's still lots of things I'm learning. Uh, but as I said, their documentation is really good, and they've got a lot of examples. So if you're confused, you know, I would definitely check that out and look into that. So we're getting pretty close. Um, but the last thing is we we had this whole thing which you know sends the data and everything like that. We still need to do that. Um, so the best way to do that actually is with what's called a service. So when we're in saving, what we're going to do is we're going to invoke um, a service. And that service's name, we'll give it a source. And just think of that as like, you know, the identification of what the service is. 
and we're going to call that service upload data. Um, that seems appropriate. So upload data. And the way we actually define these is with the machine function, you pass in a configuration for the machine, but you can also pass in these, uh, this other object that will define things like upload data, but we'll need to do it inside of the services you have. There are lots of things that can go in here, but right now we're just going to do this one. We got upload data for now. Let's just return a promise dot resolve. So that will resolve it. Um, when you do a service, it does expect that you return back um, something that will, will let you know when it's when it's done and whatnot, because you can call on done and that will you can send it back to saved, which is nice. So that's meaning when upload data is done, we'll go back to the save state. Uh, we can also very easily say on error, go to the error state. Now we haven't specified an error state, so let's just do that really fast. And let's just say, uh, you know, if there's a retry event, we'll, we'll make up some new event, then you can go back to saving. And that should resolve all that. So we're here, and then we're going to say, waiting to save, after a thousand milliseconds, you go to saving, and it went so fast, uh, that it went back to saves, you couldn't even see it. Um, but once we implement our delayed save, you'll actually see that again, which we can go ahead and do now. So before, what did we had? We had delayed save, um, we had this whole thing, and we wanna take that and say, okay, this is now what our upload data thing should be returning. But how do we get the storage ID and the previous data? We're actually just gonna call this data because we don't have that, that ref anymore. Well, as I said, you can pass events uh, into these things. So from here, let's say we're gonna get the storage ID. Actually, in fact, we can just get it right off of here. Say so e.storage ID and e.data. We'll just send that along. But how do we actually pass that in? Well, here's the problem. At the waiting to save, when we passed in the delay, that was fine. At that time, that's what really what we want the delay to be. But if we pass the data in here, We've got a problem. That means that the data is actually going to be um, stagnant. It's going to be stale. Um, it's not going to update. So we really actually want to send in the data as soon as it's ready to save after these thousand seconds have passed. So this may not be you know, the best way to do it or the way that everyone would like to do it, but it's the way that I solve this problem. I actually said that instead of going directly to saving, go to a ready to save state. So we need to declare that. We'll say ready to save and ready to save, ready to save. And then from there, what we'll do is we'll say on and we'll have a new event called save data. And then on save data, we're going to go ahead and go to um, saving. And that's all we need to do, which actually makes me realize that the error shouldn't be going to saving directly. It should be going to ready to save so that they have the option of, hey, do I want to save again? So ready to save, on save data, saving. And that's perfect, we'll be good. And so what happens here is we can call the save data event inside of this use effect. So this use effect actually has a ton of stuff we do not need. So we're really going to get rid of all of that, get rid of this. We're gonna say if equal, well, sorry, if cur uh, current, dot matches and if we're in ready sorry ready to save i thought i had it saved on my clipboard but i didn't and if we're not ready to save then we're going to send the event save data i believe that's what it was called let's just check to make sure yep we've got save data and then we need to pass in data or storage id first and then data. And so in here, this is complaining because we don't have current, we don't have send, we don't have storage ID, and we don't have data. But now we should be good. And this is great because this is never actually gonna call unless we're in the ready to save state. And then as soon as we call it, we're gonna be outside the ready to save state. So we don't really care how often this is updating. It's only gonna happen when it's supposed to happen. So hopefully we actually hooked everything up right. And I can just say that my name is Brooks, and it'll say saving, and it'll say saved. And if I refresh, my name is still Brooks. And that's actually really, really cool how easily that worked. So I can keep typing and then just a bunch of stuff. And it's just going to keep going through this process, um, which is just very, very cool. So to take this one step further, one thing that I really love about X state is the fact that actually it makes it to where I don't really need to deal with use effect. Use effect can be 
kind of confusing. It's a very powerful um, hook, probably you know, probably the most powerful hook if you really want to think about it. But uh, it's also can be really difficult to deal with because um, you have this dependency array, but this really should be thought of as an optimization. This shouldn't be thought of as guaranteeing anything. Um, so it can be really tough to think about. So what I like to do with, uh, once I've got my state machine out is I like to just delete these because it actually should still work. And let's just delete this just so we have no memory of use effect. Um, under the hood use machine, it's using use effect already. It's already handling all the stuff. It's already making sure it's updating stuff at the right time. So we'll keep typing my name and then you'll see it goes from saved to saving. So all these intermediate states, those are actually just implementation details. The final user isn't even going to have to worry about seeing them, which I think is really good. I don't think they actually want to have to deal with that so much. I think they really just want to know, am I up to date or is it in the process of saving? Possibly if there's an error and we can handle that if we send in an error. Um, as, as of now, if there's an error, it's actually just going to cause us to resave. So you might get an infinite loop and an issue. So you may want to change that. We'll leave that as an exercise you know, for you to deal with. But other than that, um, this just works exactly like you want it to. Saved to saving, the back to saved. As soon as anything is updated, it goes ahead and it starts that process after a 1,000 milliseconds of saving. And it'll always make sure it's saving the right data because it waits until it's ready to save to send in the most up-to-date data. And so here, let's just make sure we're doing everything absolutely right. That shouldn't be a problem because we just updated it. You know, it, it should be the same. But let's just make sure we're actually sending in um, the correct data. And so that's everything. That's how you would use xState. Um, to take this even one last step further, is something really cool we can do is we can actually visualize this very quickly. xState has a really cool um, visualizer where you can throw in a machine and it will automatically digitalize it for you. Something that I know that we have to do, we have to change, is unfortunately um, this will cause it to break if we pass that in. So we'll just send a delay of 1,000 milliseconds just to make sure that looks right. And then in here, we're not actually going to do the local storage. Let's just resolve it and update that. And we're good to go. So if we're in the save state, we can say hasn't saved data, waiting to save after 1,000 milliseconds. It says ready to save. Then we can do the save data event, and it's saving, and it's going to resolve and be done. We can go through all that again. And here, I'm going to also click error, and you can see we're in the error state. Um, and I must have messed something up because it's not too happy about going from, you know, it doesn't seem to have this retry. Ah, I know why. It's because you have to do on, and you have to put this here, and now it should work. So we can update that, and you can see that that error state now has a retry. So really cool stuff you can do with xState. Just makes it so much easier not to basically not mess up um, at all, which is, you know, with your, with your logic and this complicated stuff. So I hope you liked this series. Um, if you did, please share it with people. If you have any feedback on how, you know, I could have done this better or anything, please let me know. All the code is in the descriptions. Um, feel free to follow me on Twitter and, you know, chat with me there.